If you've been following RV news, you may have heard that there may be a ban on the so-called RV auto transformers. And in this video, we're going to look at that topic and just see what the deal is. If you do any kind of search on the internet, search NFPA 1194 and auto transformers, you will find article after article explaining that there is a ban coming up in 2020. Now the NFPA is the National Fire Protection Association and they are an industry association that develops standards. They are not connected with the government, they are a private entity. They do publish three standards that are of interest to our viewers. And the first one, Publication 70, is the National Electrical Code which many of you are familiar with. The second one is Publication 1192 which deals with RVs and the third one, Publication 1194, deals with electrical wiring and RV parks. Currently the 2020 edition of 1194 is not yet available. On their website they only show the 2018 version and since I'm not a member of the NFPA I don't have the ability to obtain any kind of a draft. So the information that I came up with was through research of other opinions on the 1194. While the federal and state government, as well as local governments, have adopted the National Electrical Code, I have no knowledge that the same holds true for 1194. As far as I know, at least at this point, 1194 is just voluntary. However, insurance companies tend to use NFPA publications in their determination of risk and liability. And your guess is as good as mine whether or not the auto transformer ban for RVs will at some point be part of the National Electrical Code. So why the ban and what is the problem? Well, the general conception of the NFPA is that the use of auto transformers places severe additional stress on the park's electrical system. So how does an auto transformer work? Well, we're going to look at it from a black box perspective rather than an engineering perspective. Essentially, an auto transformer can be a step up transformer or a step down transformer or basically an equal transformer. So it can change the ratio of the windings inside electronically so that we can step up or step down the voltage. If everything is hunky-dory, let's say we have our RV connected to this side, it's going to require 10 amps at 120 volts and for simplicity's sake we're going to ignore the power factor and, and other things. We're looking at 1200 VA or 1200 watts. If we have 120 volts on the supply it's going to supply the same 1200 watts and that's going to require 10 amps. So what happens on a hot summer weekend when everybody's at the park running their air conditioners and the input voltage of the park goes down to 100 volts? And undoubtedly this is an extreme example but it does make our point. The auto transformer will just simply maintain the output voltage. Well we still need to supply 1200 watts because we're still getting 120 volts at 10 amps on the output because the auto transformer made this a slightly step up transformer. Well we got to get that 1200 watts from somewhere and we get it from Ohm's law. So 1200 watts divided by 100 volts gives us 12 amps. So we're actually exchanging voltage for current on the primary. Hopefully you can see that in a brownout condition we require more current from the service. So the purpose of the auto transformer is to maintain the output voltage when the input voltage is low. To understand the situation completely we're going to have to look at how RV parks are wired. In the National Electrical Code in section 551 it provides minimum requirements for RV park wiring. It essentially says that for 20 amp sites, except for a tent site, it must apply 2400 volt amps, which means 20 amps. And for the 30 amp campsites, they must apply 3600 VA or 30 amps. And finally, the 50 amp service campsites must apply 12,000 VA or 50 amps at 240 volts. So if we have an RV park that has a single campsite, say it's a 30 amp campsite, then the power pedestal has to supply that 30 amps. Now this may seem self-evident. It will become clearer as we talk about multiple sites. Well, let's say we have a campground that has 10 sites. All right, each site has a 30 amp service. 
and the park must supply 30 amps to each site. So you would think the park needs to supply 300 amps. Well, unfortunately that's not the case. There is a derating factor in the NEC Table 551.73 which says the more sites you have, the less power you have to provide to each site. And for 10 sites, you only have to supply 50% of the power. So no, not 300 amps, 150 amps total. And the reason for that is because the NEC believes not every site is going to be occupied at the same time and or not all sites are likely to require 30 amps at the same time. But as RVers, we know that's not true. On any given weekend, especially a holiday weekend in the hot summer, the whole park is full and we're all running our air conditioners. And for example, my RV, I have a 13,000 BTU air conditioner. It pulls about 18 amps when it's running. In the hot summertime, it's running probably 75% of the time. So it does not take a big stretch of imagination that on a 4th of July weekend, each campground is going to draw more than 15 amps simultaneously at given times. And that even becomes worse when you consider that a lot of the RVs these days, you know, they're very power hungry. And a lot of them are 50 amp RVs and they'll have one, two, and three air conditioners. They have electric water heaters. They have fake fireplaces. And then you add a microwave, coffee pot, and whatever. Then that 50 amp coach is going to have an adapter cable plugged into a 30 amp circuit. And these days, even pop-ups have air conditioners. So yeah, you can have brownout conditions. Well then, you bring in a guy here that has an auto transformer and he's going to try to get 120 volts on his line, but he's going to draw a couple more amps. And that's bad enough as it is, but what if everybody had an auto transformer? That's just going to make the problem that much worse, that much quicker. And that is why, in my opinion, they're banning auto transformers. It does not solve the problem with sizing requirement, but it makes it worse. So here's my summary. As of 2020, the NFPA has or will ban the use of auto transformers in an RV environment. I've heard that some parks prohibit the use of them already, and insurance companies tend to use the standards in determining risk and liability. Who knows? I would take all these considerations into mind if you're thinking about buying one. I'm not going to say that you should or shouldn't buy one, but you should have enough information to make that decision. If you have any information on the official status of NFPA 1194, or if you can provide any more information to this discussion, please comment below.